The Batman, directed by Matt Reeves, starring Robert Pattinson, Zoe Kripp, Colin Farrell, Paul Dano, Jeffrey White, Andy Serkis. Such a phenomenal film. I gotta admit, it's been over a month and I'm still not over this movie. Hey, yo, oh, welcome to my channel. It's Sullivan Adams. This is the first time in a while since I've got to see he or done a video like this. Let's go uh, with the basics. First of all, this is gonna be the most phenomenal Batman film ever since since Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. Wait, way better, better than Batman v Superman, better than Justice League, uh, and henceforth, like probably the best DC movie in a while. Oh, that's very decent. And this movie is three hours. This is the first, yeah, the only movie DC movie that has been released in that long. Or even longer is Zack Snyder's Justice League that went on HBO Max, you know. But that's a different story. Like this story, you know. I'll start off with the basics. First of all, oh, the dark tone of this film was beautiful. Oh, you know, nothing but pure shadowy. To show the dark side of Gotham in every way, it's definitely one of the best films there out there. You know. Yeah. Oh, you know, Batman is. You know, he's a superhero, but he's also a dark and complex character. You know, Matt Reeves, one of the reasons why he went and the, the, the made the film the way he did was to not only show, oh, was to show a Batman grounded in reality. You know, something that most Batman, you know, all Batman have a dark past. Their parents were murdered. Uh, murdered. He, he was out to become a superhero, spent years of his life training, trying to stop not the evil that t took his parents' life, affecting Gotham, you know. That's the premise. We don't, we we know about this. This is a Batman who has been out for a while. This is basically a a. We already know the story. It's nothing but pure Batman most of the time. The only time you ever see Bruce Wayne, it's only a little bit of him, just small portions. There's nothing. Oh, just pure Batman, and, and we haven't seen and he and Robert Pattinson's Bruce Wayne. You know, he's complex as you could tell. He definitely embraces the character in every way, you know? Now, he's not to be underestimated. He's a perfect actor, and we know that they're working on making their own set of trilogies, you know? This is definitely one of the best films ever. Uh, I mean, but you don't need me to say that. It's a Batman movie, so... Not all Batman films are good, you know? Uh, no, not good. We all know about the Joe Schumacher, but this is the best in a long time. Remember, this movie suffered from delays due to the pandemic, you know, Robert Tanson being tested for COVID. Back when they first released uh, the teaser in 2020, uh, during the DC fandom in 2020, uh, they did that because, they did that, you know, they only had, 20, I heard they only completed 20% of the film oh, when they did that. But because of the COVID pandemic and everything being shut down and delayed, it's, they, they delayed for over a year, but it was a worth wait. Everything is fantastic. One of the things that was the premise of the film is the secrets of Gotham. There are so many secrets, so many lies. One other thing about the Riddler played by Paul Dano here is to expose the lies and secrets of Gotham's elite. The governments, the wealthy families, and Bruce Wayne's family, and Amity, you know, is one of them, you know. Being one of the people that helped found and made the city what it is. You know, Thomas and Martha Wayne, they were the savior of the city and their death was tragic. Him being left a billionaire. While, while Riddler, he wants to expose the secrets behind it. The lies. You know, I mean, why does a boy like... Why does he has everything while I have nothing, you know? Because he's the billionaire. He's the... Ch and, you know, he reveals these secrets by taking out all these government officials one by one. The murderer. One of the things about this movie is... If they you they based it on not on Hong Halloween about a serial killer that's been going around killing people. That's Batman: The Long Halloween. You should see it. I I watched the movie. The Long Halloween, you know, it's such a good film. You know, it's such a good story. I mean, I, they made two animated films just before this movie came out that for me, it showed up last year. You know, The Long Halloween. You know, was a serial killer called Holidays, but murdering different people. They based it on The Long Halloween, but it also took from real life. For example, the Zodiac Killer, who would leave secret codes for the police to decipher. One of the first code is, is, what are lies to a dead man? And and, and the secret 
of that and the answer to that is he lies still you know matt reeves you know he's a genius he leaves these puzzles like for over a year he's been he's been secretly leaving clues in every post free secret you know but director james gunn who did did guardians of the galaxy he left secret codes in his messages secret easter eggs that fans deciphered you know and you gotta love directors that are very passionate about their work you know and he is very passionate uh, my heart, one of my favorite aspects of it is, is everything is connected. Like, for example, uh, Call My Falcone, um, you know, played by Jeffrey Torres. He's a good actor. I grew up watching him, and some of my favorite movies of him are in, when he's in comedy movies, which uh, I had him Sandler. That was funny. <laughs> he's pretty funny. But other stuff, you know, it's a pretty good. The fact that they did this, you know, this movie was, this movie was very dramatic, and it deserves an Oscar. You know, for his performance, you know, because this was a Batman grounded reality like we could all relate to, you know, very serious, very compelling, you know, story. One of my favorite aspects of this is Colin Farrell as the Penguin, you know. Jonah Hill was originally going to be the Penguin, but he left because of some weird pay dispute. So in Colin Farrell, he's not as fat as the Penguin actually is, but they use CGI prosthetics to bring the Penguin to life. Beautiful. The fact that he, the fact that they did that, and using Colin Farrell as the Penguin, you know, Jeffrey White, uh, he plays Jim Gordon. This is the first time we ever got to see a black Jim Gordon, but which was surprising. But he definitely owned the character in his way, you know. Performance to all, Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman, you know, definitely one of my favorites, you know. And Zoe Kravitz is an amazing actor. This is not the first time she starred in a DC film. That was Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, in which he played a girl who had the Joker, or, or at least Arthur Fleck, who was the Joker for that movie, he was interested in. And and it's real that they're, we're getting a Joker sequel. I mean, one of the reasons why Joaquin Phoenix said he never did superhero movies because he didn't want to be dragged down by sequels. And now we're getting word of another sequel. And speaking of Joker, we have, her, we have hints of a Joker in, in this series, you know. Uh, uh, I'll explain that more like much later on. There were always secrets, you know, in this in this city. You know, everything is connected. Bruce Wayne, you know, discovering these secrets. You know, Batman, the secrets of his father, the sins of the father, as you will. And one of my favorite is gotta be Andy Serkis. He definitely he owns owns it as uh, Alfred Pennyworth. You know, Bruce Bruce Wayne's loyal right aide and friend. You know, he definitely does his best in this movie. And, you know, and he is a he is an Oscar winner. There's also Pennyworth, uh, the series that's on HBO Max, which is basically I heard it has two seasons now. It's just a, it's a prequel series of Pennyworth, you know, of Alfred when he was working the British government, and then he later meets Thomas Wayne and becomes his butler. You know, you know, Alfred, you know, long history. You know, uh, he respects Thomas Wayne very much. He's the father. That filled in the void for Bruce when he lost his parents. The one person that's been by his side since the beginning. You know, you, you gotta admit, with, hey, Bruce does. Batman does need help in solving these crimes. You know, there's a reason why he has sidekicks like Robin, and uh, and Nightwing, uh, Batgirl. Uh, there was no, there's no Barbara in this movie. You know, this de definitely one of the best aspects of this movie is you connect with every character. You feel everything. One of the things, I mean, lost children, like for example, one of the things about this movie, I gotta admit, that does have an impact is legacy. Like for example, when one character dies, a Bruce sees, Bruce sees himself and the child of that person who dies, the mayor. Like he was the person, he's the person that died. He's the first murder of this film, and now a little boy is going to grow up without a father, just like he is. There's also Zoe Kravitz's Catwoman. A woman who lost her mother at a very young age, but she knows for Carmine Falcone, you know, that he, they grew, that she grew up watching him, that their mother knew each other. I'm spoiled. It's been out for a month, so what the hell are you doing here? So, not here for spoilers, you know. It's definitely connected. Like the sins of the, everything is connected in a circle, you know. Oh, so many names revealed to each other. I gotta admit, it's definitely. Not so, everything is connected, and the Riddler, he's uncovering that by attacking the people he thinks the most. The corrupt police, the government, the gangsters, everything is collected. There's always corruption in Gotham. 
criminal activity. That's one of the reasons why Batman exists, to hunt down these criminal figures. And so, uh, so, it's, so he is definitely, he, he's trying to become the hero that they need. He's been out for a while. They know that he exists. If he exists in the shadows, was, he literally is a weapon of fear. He embodies the fear that these criminals should be careful when he when he stalks when he stalks the night when you see when those criminals go out at night and they do something evil. Remember, he's watching you, you know. And he's just fresh off the bat, like he's known. He still has his issues, though, you know. No, he's a young Batman. He's not respected. He's still. He's just doing this for only a limited time, just a year, barely, so. You gotta admit, he is definitely not to be underestimated, you know. But he is a genius, you know. One of the things about this Batman is different than the other Batman are, is that this is a true, faithful Batman. What I mean by faithful is, we get the detective Batman that's here. The detective. Every other Batman movie, as has seen before, has been what you call, we, we know that he's fighting bad guys, he's trying to fight and crime, but we don't get to see the real detective, not really. Remember, he is a billionaire, Bruce Wayne is a billionaire, he taught himself, so he used his family's resources to make himself intelligent, to become a tactical genius. I mean, I mean, he used, I mean, to quote a line from, uh, I think it was from Robin, from one of the bad, from one of those other Batman franchises that DC Jewish. He was taught by Nobel laureates, people who literally graduated universities. He had the mind of a genius, you know, and his physical endurance, and the, the strength he feels in his prime, you know. He is very, very strong individual. He's no ordinary human being, you know. So he's very, he's very gifted, strong, talented, intelligent, but he's also a very dark and complex person. One of the reasons why he can't let other people in, because not just because of his secret, because he can't connect with other people. I think one of the aspects of the Lego Batman movie, and yes, I mentioned Lego Batman. <laughs> it's a good film. You should watch it. <laughs> I got a kick out of it. Is that he is unable to let somebody in because he doesn't want to be a part of a family again because he's afraid of getting hurt. And we got to see that with that with Robin, played by Michael Sarah in that film, but that's something else, you know. Uh, you know, the, you know, he's a very lonely and person, remember, he, even though it happened a long time ago, he still feels the pain, the tra trauma, and we already seen that. I mean, he's Batman most of the time in this film. I mean, we haven't seen that before, or, you know, he's trying to he is Batman almost all the time, you know, he... Hey, it, this is not just his. This is not just his duty and responsibility. It's his life. You know, he embraces the dark to, to protect others. You know, to call a line for the he he he, he, he he's like a nocturnal animal. You know, that's basically saying that he doesn't think of himself as a human. He embraces the dark and drives in it like a real bat. You know, everything in this is very. It's a very good film. You know. A very intriguing, entertaining, and it's three, and it's a three-hour film. It's eventually gonna make its leave. It's been out for a month. Eventually, it's gonna leave theaters and go on HBO Max, which I suggest you get it for. Hey, I have it on my phone, the app. It only costs anywhere from ten to fifteen dollars a month. Won't set you back much. So, and trust me, I've used it. You get all kinds of Water Brothers project plus some bonuses too. You know, this is just. I know this sounds like an advertising product, but hey, what do you expect? I'm just. I'm just telling as it is. To, continue, to move forward, everything in this film, you know, you know, I, I, I definitely am a big fan of um, Selena Kyle, played by Zoe Kravitz. She definitely owns the role as Catwoman, showing that she was able to keep up with Bruce, Bruce you know, she was able to keep up with uh, the pace of what you call, of Robert Pattinson's Batman, you know. Uh, they, they're both, in a way, similar in nature. Children forced to be, grow up very fast due to trauma, losing their... I'm trying to praise this dark world, you know. That's a, they're very similar in a way. Hey, they have similar chemistry, you know. And remember, they are technically, you know, they they do care about each other, but uh, but they can't express their feelings towards one another. Not rem and they have shown interest in the other. You know, that's the, one of the aspects of Batman. So Batman, you know, him and Catwoman's relationship. I mean, they even got married in the comics, but 
<laughs> those two getting married, you know, that's just, you know, uh, that's, that's just something else. I got to admit that this was one of the perfect films, you know, everything, like Batman, you know, to this, in this film, you know, he, he doesn't, he is seen by the city as a very dark figure, but by the end, he becomes the hero, good scene. One of the, my favorite is, just, I got to admit, Paul Dano, he definitely shows, uh, as a, he already takes the role of character seriously as the Riddler. I definitely enjoyed him as the Riddler, even though he kind of has that, you know, that baby face. <laughs> but he's definitely one of the best Riddlers, actors to play the Riddler I've seen in a while. My, my favorite is always going to be John Glover, who played the Riddler in Batman the Animated Series. If you don't know who John Glover is, he's an American and film TV and film actor. He started in other TC projects, such as playing Lionel Luther in Smallville, that's Luther's father, and the, fa the, the father of Dr. Savannah in Shazam. I can't wait for Shazam, you know? Uh, for Shazam, Wrath of the Gods, and uh, I think uh, Black Adam that comes out this later this year. Uh, I think summer and winter, you know, can't wait to see the rock just burning people up with lightning. I have to admit, this is definitely one of my favorite films, you know? Three hours, you know, I enjoyed the ride, you know, when they first came out, I wanted to immediately see it, but, you know, it was pretty, it was, you know, already packed, you know, uh, it was like, I had, I had to wait a week, because I was with my fam, he, so, I wanted to take my father with me, but instead I went with my cousins, we definitely enjoyed the ride, you know, we even got there, it was also during the time of the mandate, uh, the special mandate that they had, you know, for the vaccines, uh, they just removed it, and look, I got this special poster. You see this? I got two of these. You know, special posters for people who went to go see it in IMAX. Me and my cousins got some. Me and my other cousin Javier went to get it, but my cousin Louis didn't. He didn't. He wasn't interested. You get these special uh, in IMAX theaters. They were giving them out. Uh, I thought like awesome. You know, and I was one of the lucky ones. And, you know, you, you get to see the whole cast. You see the Riddler, Catwoman. I and mean, Robert Pattinson's uh, Batman, you know, Andy Circus, you know, Joe Penguin, you know, everything is in there. It's all kind of together, you know. You gotta love this movie because uh, because it really it really is a faithful and true adaptation to Batman. Now let's talk about about the secrets of this movie. There were secret codes that Matt Reeves, you know, he, he for over a year, he's been like leaving around secrets, you know, codes to, because he based not only Riddler on the, on, on the Zodiac Killer, a man who would taunt police using secret codes. He, and he let those secret codes, man, like one of the, like one of the secret codes, like I said, he lies still. What are lies to a dead man? He lies still. He used every letter in the alphabet making his own secret code and thing. One co there was one thing that he did, you know, there was a deleted scene that he wanted to add, they add, didn't add to the film that was deleted later. One with a character whose symbol, whose name start with J. And I, that means, and I, that means the Joker. And we get to see Paul Dano's Riddler interact with a person in Arkham who is known as who is definitely the Joker, play, and he's played by Barry Cogan. If you don't know who Barry Cogan is, he starred in Marvel's Eternals. He was that character uh, that I think he had the ability to control other people's minds, mind control. Uh, I forgot his name, you know. It was Eternals, you know. And people are having mixed feelings about Eternals, you know, comparing it to what you call to other Marvel projects like, say, Inhumans, which was supposed to be its own film, but was only was an eight-episode series that that bombed and really didn't. Um, well, back then things were different with Marvel. It was a bit, a bit crazy, you know. I for I want to love the fact that we we are getting a Joker. Like this Joker was definitely one of the best. They, they he released the deleted scene. It's five minutes of goldness. We and it didn't seem that he's going to be the main antagonist for the next film. Others are are guessing that it's going to be Mister Freeze. God, I hope it's Mister Freeze. We love you, Arnold Schwarzenegger, but you're Mr. Freeze, just too many pun jokes. You're in a cinematic Batman movie, not Adam West Batman. <laughs> you know, and I remember growing up watching that film all the time as a kid. You know, I had the tape, but I was always reminded because I was such a big Batman fan buying toys, you know. That was, that's my opinion. All in all, they all did a perfect job. It was a good film, you know. 
I, for one, enjoyed it. Definitely one of my favorite Batman movies in a long time. And one of the good DC movies, you know. Speaking of DC projects, you know, one of the things is you got to give these characters full creative control when it comes to Matt Re with, with, like, for example, James Gunn, he did his version of Suicide Squad, was technically a sequel to the original, but its own, but st but its own standalone film. And because that movie just was not the best, it was universally panned. People hated what you call a lot of people. One of them was Jared Leto's Joker, but Zack Snyder brought that back when he made the Snyder Cut four-hour version of Justice League, which is perfect. And they brought him back, you know, and they made him, and they made a good job of it. Then there were, then the, and, and, and now this movie, you know, give credit, like, that Suicide Squad film got prop, problematic because they interfered with it. Direct, like, the studio interfered with it. There was behind the scenes drama. If you let directors have full creative control of certain projects, then things will work out perfectly for you, you know? That's what I say, you know? Just let directors like James Gunn, I don't know if he's gonna ever direct another kind of superhero film. Uh, for for DC, but we know he's gonna do Guardians of the Galaxy Part Three. You know that's gonna come out somewhere late on. You know, uh, and remember he was signed up to do suicide, the Suicide Squad because after Marvel fired him and there was a huge boycott. Dave Bautista, who played Drax the Destroyer, would even threaten to quit. You know, with these superhero films, you know they are definitely a part of pop, pop culture, and you, and Batman has been synonymous with that for nearly. For over 80 years, you know, you know, like some people say, like there are some films right now that are what would you call out oh, some superhero films, like for example, Morbius that are getting panned a little bit, like from the Sony film franchise, you know, that Sony's doing their own universe, but it, which is kind, of, but it's also kind of a mixed bag. I have not seen in Morbius, you know, it's kind of a mixed bag right now when it comes to Marvel. Oh. Marvel, Sony, and Disney, because all three of them got a stake in these franchises because they each hold a chunk of these characters, you know? It's the money that's being made off of it. Like, Steven Spielberg himself once said that superhero films once go, one, will one day leave, will, will be gone the day of the Western, as in how Western movie during a cowboy films were once popular but no longer are. It's, so, sorry, Steven. You may have won Oscars for your films, but... They're still around, you know. I, for one, can't wait to see how they... I, I for one, am interested in this, you know. I want to see more of Matt Reeves' style uh, to see this, you know. I want to see more... I want to see what, what other things he can do, you know. I, for one, can't wait to see him. And and it looks like you know, like he's going to... Uh, oh, we're definitely going to probably going to see uh, Barry Coggins' Joker, you know. I mean, these DC projects, they're going to do their own thing, but they're going to do it separately. Like, for example, there are films that are directly tied to DC, to the DC, the DC, DCAU. Like, for example, um, like I mentioned, Shazam, Fury of the Gods, Black Adam, Aquaman, and, and The Lost Kingdom. Then there's also going to be another film series, like characters getting their own spin-off movies, you know. Movies, you know, films, you know. Oh, like films that are part that that are DC properties, but they're getting their own separate story at the end. This is something I definitely, you know, would like to see how. Excuse me. I definitely would like to see this. The how DC because they they DC they definitely you know they have the potential to make great movies. The problem is, but Marvel has a head start, are and they know what to do with their character. They've been do, doing this for practically twenty years. Way back, and I say 20 years because it, as Marvel stopped, start, Marvel started getting into films and filming characters. Like, for example, there was the Sp Sony Spider-Man movies, X-Men franchise, or movies back to the 90s like Blade. Speaking of Blade, Mahershala Ali, you know. I mean, today, today they have their own streaming services, you know, with HBO Max, you know, they, they're Warner Brothers. But they have their own shows, they're expanding, you know. They've gone full. They've exceeded all expectations, and if they're gonna have to at least keep up with Marvel and other film series, they have to be, they have to be, you know, they have to get up on their feet and be more creative when it comes to them and their projects. You know, if they want to compete, 
with these guys. They have they have at least have to show that we're not only they're willing to put out uh, with the money, but also creatively, you know. Like what they did with did with James Gunn, Zack Snyder, either and Matt Reeves. And I can't wait to see if they do more projects like this. This they definitely have dark tones. But they're also entertaining. One of the things you want people to see is, is to be entertained and to have them enjoy their time. That's something you need. And I definitely enjoyed my time. And you know, it was a serious movie. And with movies like this that are created, this was a faithful, good adaptation. And I can't wait to see what Matt Reeves is going to come up next with a, with a new Batman film. It probably won't come out for probably another two to three years. And I'm fine with that as long as they get it right, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's all I got to say. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. This is the first time I've done a video like this in a long, long time. Thank you for hearing me out. Um, this is Solomon Adams giving you my latest video on The Batman, starring Robert Pattinson, and Zoe Kravitz, Andy Serkis, Jeffrey White, hey, hey, Paul, Paul Dano, um, no, Kravitz, uh, I said that. See you guys next time. I hope with all things. Now come on with anything new. See ya.